It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, it's that time again. Time for another episode of AgriChat. This is episode 455. Tonight I'm joined by Ammo. Hello. Grace. Hello. And Thalen. Hi there. Much shorter introduction than usual. Yeah, we're we're down a bunch of folks, but it'll be fine. Like we got some topics. Yeah, and I just realized, like I think I put most of these on here. So we've got stuff to talk about, and yeah. we all know when we have a short topic list, we have a long show. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, so this this week, um, BlizzCon kind of snuck up on me. And that happened on Friday and I guess today. And since they now essentially stream the entire show to YouTube, it's real easy to watch everything um, without, you know, the, the, the pass or anything like that. So um, I watched what I could yesterday and um, it, it is shocking the difference that the show sounds post Microsoft deal closing. Um, <laughs> like, well, first of all, like Phil Spencer was the second person on stage. So Mike Ibarra did like a little bit of an intro, but within the first 10 minutes, Phil Spencer was out on stage talking to everyone. Hmm. And he kind of said all the right things that, you know, he wanted to, you know, improve upon all the games and like, you know, you know, support interesting ways to play. And, um, like it, it was a good little speech and it was itself about 10 minutes long. Um, so it kind of set the tone. Um, and what they did is instead of having like kind of like really tight and concise keynote, like they have in, in previous years. Um, and I think they kind of did it that way because they used to cut people off at the end of the keynote and then make you pay for, you know, BlizzCon virtual pass to see the rest of it. Ah, uh, yeah. But now, like, the the opening show was way longer, so that they had, like, a an entire section on Overwatch. And one of the things that seemed to be the case under Activision was that they were seriously clamping down on any of the esports-type stuff. And there was a big question as to whether or not like the Overwatch League would even exist in the future. Right. And it, and it seemed like they kind of doubled down on no, like Overwatch is going to have esports stuff and here's all the things that are going to happen, you know, and let let's show a, let's let's show off a brand new character and you know kind of setting a roadmap for what other characters would introduce during the year. So, it seemed like there was more life in Overwatch than than there has been in a bit. So like that was good. I guess I'm not an overwatch person, but like it seemed positive. Um, I still am bitter about the lack of a PVE game, but mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they talked about hearthstone and they talked about, um, Warcraft rumble, which is their new mobile game. And I kind of skipped through that cause I, did not get to watch it all in one setting. So um, after the first announcement, I had to take a long break and then I caught back up so I could basically skip all of Hearthstone and all of Warcraft Rumble. <laughs> um, actually, no, the second thing was Diablo. And um, I did not think that they were going to announce a Diablo expansion, um, mostly because if you looked at the schedule, there weren't really dedicated breakout panels for Diablo. There was... Like, apparently, go play Diablo on the floor, but there weren't any specific Diablo panels other than I think there was a campfire chat today, which have been kind of infamous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, and it's pretty early. I mean, Diablo 4 hasn't been out for that long. It wouldn't be shocking if they didn't have a big announcement for right, it right away. Right. But apparently, like, in, in Season 3, they're introducing challenge modes. Um, so it'll be kind of like challenge rifts, 
Um, but it'll be like a challenge dungeon that you run with specific parameters and the leaderboards will be based on rankings for that. Um, that the expansion is coming in, uh, I think they said late 2024. Um, and it's more stuff with Mephisto and they're introducing a new class, but they did not say what the class was uh, only that it hasn't existed in Diablo before. Um, but apparently there's been data leaks that it's something nature focused. So maybe Druidy, like not, not Diablo Druids, but like more like a wow Druid. Um, I don't know. Like it, it's something nature focused and, um, the expansion area they said is going to the jungle area from Diablo two. Oh, okay. Will it be raining sideways? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, probably blood rain too. I don't know. I mean, I I'm actually a little excited. I still haven't bought, in all transparency, have not bought Diablo 4 and will not buy Diablo 4 until a certain someone floats away on his golden parachute and doesn't see any more of my no. money. No. <laughs> Same. But I am looking forward to actually buying Diablo 4 now. And... Like and, I, I it's mean, not going to be my forever game. I think it still sounds like it's not at the point that Diablo three was for me, but it seems to be getting I, better. I got a good two weeks out of it, like two three weeks, something like that, and I had fun with this latest season. And like that's that's okay. Like that's that's all I ever get out of a Diablo three season. It's true, and I, I like I am legitimately starting to feel a little bit hyped about being able to play this game <laughs> and like, considering where it was the last time I got to try it that, that, that's a big change yeah like season two was a genuinely fun experience I I'll be here for season three like no question because if if they improved as much as they did between you know one and two and even like between like like the game was better between launch and season one. So if they continue to improve it over time, I think it'll be a great game at some point. I think it'll be kind of a shallow game always, but it's okay. Like, I mean, uh, at, at most, like it, at best, if we get like a month out of it, like that's, that's more than enough to me. Yeah. Like I, I have other games. <laughs> like, I, I play lots of games. Um, but yeah, like so, I'm I'm looking forward to an expansion. I was kind of hoping it would be a, a you know Crusader slash uh, Templar slash Paladin type class because that's kind of the thing I miss from Diablo Four. But I'll I'll try something new. I'm hoping at some point like Diablo Four gets all the greatest hits. Like I would like to see a higher fidelity modern Witch Doctor, for example. Yes, please. <laughs> um, like the Druid's pretty fun. Like I played some Druid, um, after I, after I basically did everything I wanted on the Barbarian, I played some Necro and I played some Druid and they're both great too. Like they're, they're fine. Like Necro is back to being a val uh, or like a viable minion class. So your skeletons don't fall over all the time and you can't right. resummon them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I wish I could resummon the skeletons. Like, that's the thing that annoys me is that once you get your maximum number of skeletons, if you consume a corpse, you just do kind of a half-assed heal instead of replacing your minion. And I'm so used to like, oh, okay, my guys are a little bit low. I'm just going to fully replace them before we get into the next fight. Um, and, and it doesn't work that way. You get just kind of a crappy heal and you have to consume way more corpses than your maximum number of minions to heal them back up to full but anyway Hello. that's not ideal but hey, maybe there's time for them to fix things yeah. before i yeah. play well i mean it is a diablo game there should be no shortage of corpses at any given point yeah, no, still. yeah, you got plenty <laughs> yeah. Of them, like and there's even things that give you extra corpses so you're gonna be raining in corpses it's fine like it's it's a necromancer class um, the, the one that really surprised me though, is world of Warcraft. I, I legitimately think I'm going to play the next expansion. Okay. Uh... Like legitimately so, because, okay. So, so Metzen came out on stage cause Metzen is now the 
creative director of the entire Warcraft franchise. He came back to Blizzard. All right. And that, like, that can go out one of two ways. Like, yeah. It can either be a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah. like, what they did is they essentially announced that you know not only is the next expansion going to be called um, like Evil Within or something like that, um, they also announced the next three expansions. And the next three expansions are essentially going to be a trilogy of expansions. And it sounds like going forward, they're going to be like basically planning that far out ahead on the story. Now, okay, I I have I have concerns about that because we've also heard that they by the time they realized Battle for Azeroth was not well received, Shadowlands was apparently mostly in the can, and they couldn't do anything to change it. So, like that concerns me if they can't be nimble enough to. Uh, turn away from a bad situation, but are these going to be shorter expansions? It's they didn't lock that down, but it sounded like they're looking to do much faster intervals for expansion. So maybe every year, every year and a half an expansion. I mean, hopefully it's easier for them to be a little bit more nimble if they're working on that kind of a timetable. But, the, the big reason why I am interested in in this expansion is it is pretty much all underground stuff. We are going to gonna the dwarf. Core. Yeah, and uh-huh. and the the race that you're going to be able to, to get as an allied race is the Earthen. That's pretty cool. And they're like like apparently the Earthen society has split into three distinct factions where there's like the the people that like really align strictly to the tenets of the Titans. And then there's basically the Adeptus Mechanicus that like only care about the machines. Uh, called, I think they're called like the machine speakers. And then there's the ones that like wandered off and they live a simple, quiet country life up on the surface. And they're more like wild hammer dwarves kind of from the look of it. But essentially like we're going down into the planet and also for whatever reason, the Arathi have showed up. Under, underground and there's a zone that's just a giant Nerubian city huh. uh, so like like it 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 tweaked all of the 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 notes that I care about <laughs> but more than that they're introducing a system called warband which sounds a lot like what Swotor was trying to do with legacies so that essentially all of the alts on your account are part of a warband. And they share progress together. So, like, all reputations are now at the warband level. Huh. And also, apparently, they're introducing cross-realm guilds and uh-huh. removing all restrictions from cross-realm raiding. Because, like, that was annoying. Like, I... Mm-hmm. Some of the last raiding I did in World of Warcraft, we were raiding with people from various other servers. And it was always a pain because you couldn't trade them any consumables or anything like that. And apparently they're just removing all those restrictions. Also, they're removing the weird transmog restrictions. So, like, if any of your characters sees an item, you just get the appearance. Oh, good. Finally. And then, like... Blizzard this... isn't just, like, killing fun? Right. Yeah. It's shocking. I kept this all waiting sounds for really the other good. shoe to drop. Because, like, usually the Blizzard way is, you know, we're we're going to give you, like, a free cake, but the cake is rotten inside. <laughs> like, there's always some <laughs> negative associated with the, the thing that they're giving us. Like, we're going to make this cool-sounding system, but it's also got to be kind of shitty somehow. Right. You can have this really cool transmog, but you can only wear it on the day of Halloween. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um... So like that's cool and and this last expansion that I don't think any of us played um they had cross faction guild so like basically there's no barrier probably region region is probably the last thing yeah like like the NA versus EU versus oceanic but like other than that it sounds like there's no more barriers between I know someone who is playing this game and I want to do things with it. That is legitimately fantastic. It it only took them 20 years. 
But right, like, like I, I'm actually really happy about it. <laughs> that's like that's what someone really asked for. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a universally good thing. Um, Just want to play with my friends. Cool. They're also adding a new system that's like an extra layer of talent trees. And that could be a horrible thing, but it also could be a good thing. So essentially like, okay, so every class except for druids has three specs. And apparently there's going to be three additional talent trees that are available, but like each spec will be able to choose from two of them. And they just kind of tweak your abilities. So like they change the flavor of what you're doing. So like you still have, you know, Thunderstrike, but your Thunderstrike behaves differently if you're in Colossus mode or if you're in Warbringer mode or whatever the, the things that they're they're saying. Okay. So, I mean, essentially like every class will have a choice of another sub-spec that you can, you know, choose with your class. So I guess like some additional customization and it didn't sound like there were any borrowed power systems. So that's also a net positive. That was my, that was going to be my question about that sort of sub class. Apparently it's a permanent system They're Nice. From, from this point forward, they're expecting it to be an evergreen part of world of Warcraft. That is how they introduced it is as a new evergreen system. That's good. Cause yeah, so I think like, that is one of the things that ultimately like caused me to detached from world of warcraft was just over and over here's a cool new system build up the cool new system okay that system doesn't matter anymore here's a new cool new system ad nauseum spend well, an entire expansion building up this cool thing and oh the expansion's over quick throw it in the fire mm-hmm. <laughs> oops you've gained one level you can no longer do the cool system anymore um so i don't know like hopefully they've they've learned some lessons in the process but I mean, just the look and feel of this expansion is interesting to me. And then on top of it, I'm an altaholic. So anything that makes my alts be able to work together is cool. And also, I won't necessarily feel bad for supporting the game once a certain person um, is jettisoned into the sun. I mean, (laughs) with the golden parachute. Yeah, I... I don't have super strong feelings about World of Warcraft one way or the other anymore at this point. Like, it, I haven't played in a pretty long time. It's mm-hmm. been long enough that my anger and disappointment <laughs> have worn off. But if my friends are going to come back for an expansion, I'll probably stick my head in and see what's up. Yeah. It. I, I want to like the thing that I, I I noticed across the board was it sounded like it was a different Blizzard, just universally by everyone that talked. I mean, that's what we need. Fingers crossed. And maybe they're coming out from underneath a shadow. I don't know. I mean, there were certain certainly some short term decisions made for a very long time. There there was a basically a decade of really short term decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh, rolling back just a little bit, like one of the things that concerned me about. Diablo 4 season two was the borrowed power aspect of the vampire powers. Yeah. Cause and you mentioned fact, that that was like what was really cool yeah. about season two. Yeah. But, but also season one had a borrowed power system that went away, but apparently the mechanic from season one is coming back in season three. So okay. it makes me wonder if vampire powers will, will make it to permanent as well. Yeah. So, so maybe they are going to do like the path of exile thing of, that maybe some maybe not set out a, a season, but yeah, but yeah, and then they'll work it into baseline. I mean, I think that's good for the long term of that game, is if they, you know, incubate things in a season and then eventually work them back in as baseline content. Oh, on, on World of Warcraft, the other thing that really interested me is they're putting in a new system called Dell, um, that is basically a one to four one to five player dungeon content that scales depending on if you're doing it solo or if you're doing it with two players or if you're doing it with three and you're, you're basically doing these delves with brand bronze beard and you can spec brands, brawn beard to basically play a role that's missing from your team. That's cool. So you can have him help you with some healing or some tanking. I do appreciate group group content that doesn't necessarily require a 
specific number of people to do. Well, the other cool thing about this is, so I don't remember what expansion they put it in. I think it was Shadowlands where they put the Great Vault in, where doing specific quote-unquote in-game abilities like gave you certain you know chances at an item, and then you could choose an item each week, and it was all basically max level gear. But it was, you know, really basically high-end PvP or high-end Mythic Plus or rating. Well, apparently Delves is going to qualify as a quote-unquote end game ability for uh, the Great Vault. That's cool. So that, like, solo open world players will be able to participate in that system from now on. Yeah, maybe, maybe just let your players have stuff. Yep. Makes let, them feel good. Let them have nice things. I, I mean, I, like I was more universally positive than I've been in years about what I was seeing. The Delve thing really, I don't know, that sounds really fun. Yeah. Like if I can just, like, if there's two of us on and we want to do a thing together, we should be able to do the thing. I mean, I kind of wish it scaled up a little bit further than that. Because, like, sure. sometimes you've got six people on, you know, or or seven and you can't do you know, realistically, like, two things, because you don't have the right people, but you might be able to, like, just all go do the thing. It, yeah. Although, although if it goes from one to five, then, you know, it seems, that seems like you could you reasonably could do, do two groups of three. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, going in the way, way back machine, like, I used to love running expeditions in Wildstar, and... It was fun to be able to do them by myself or with a group, depending on who happened to be around, and still get reasonable rewards, no matter how many people happen to be playing. Right. Like, it's just, it's fun to be able to play the way you want, and it's extra fun if you can do it with friends, and it's just as rewarding. Well, and they had that one system that they only had for one expansion that was like three person groups. And they were like sort of mythic dungeon level difficulty. I don't remember what that system was called, but like it was a totally the, different the island thing. No, it wasn't the island thing. This was before that. I think it was during Pandaria where like, it was basically a three person dungeon. They were like challenge dungeons. I don't remember like, I feel, what they were called. Yeah. I feel like I remember what you're talking about, but I don't, because I used to run them a lot with, uh, with Kailana and Demai, where like the three of us would do it. Uh, and it was like a, you got like, I think you got a reward for doing one of them once a week or something like that. And I, I just remember we'd always do at least one a week. And they were just like the, a three person, and they were more story focused than a dungeon traditionally is. So they were like, I don't know, like a, a scenario. Maybe they were called scenarios. Scenarios sounds familiar. Yeah. But like, if Delve can play that role where you can have yes you know, scenarios with three player instances, yeah, where where you don't have a full group, but like we can do this thing instead, and it's cool. Yep, and they were and they were they were they were pretty fun, and you could do them with a smaller amount of people, and yep. so of course they took them away. Right, like they only lasted one one season or one. Uh, I guess I should say one expansion because they also have seasons in. Yeah, because they yeah because they were Panda Town. I don't know. I I I'm, I'm way more positive about the future of WoW than ever I've been in probably a decade. It it definitely makes me smile. Like I'm not invested anymore, but like yeah, the I thought of just about the story friends right coming back together and hopping into the game for a while in the same way that we would hop into a Diablo season. Mm-hmm. Like yep. that that sounds like it could be appealing. It wouldn't be a forever game for me again, I don't think ever. But the, it it could be fun to hop in and out. The other thing that interested me is a version of WoW Classic called Season of Discovery, which is basically crangled WoW. Oh no. Where like what? all the talents don't like like, okay, well, one of the Warlock specs is basically just a tank spec. Sweet. Or a Priest tank spec. Sweet. I mean, Warlock's been wanting that for a long time, so. Yeah, it's basically like these these ideas that people have asked for, they're now putting into Classic WoW, and you can do that thing. 
which makes me wonder if they're going to bring back DPS with shield and, and sword as warrior, which was like by far one of my favorite little eras of wow. And then the thing that just makes no sense whatsoever is they're going to have cataclysm classic. Womp womp. What? <laughs> Which is the entire reason why Classic exists in the first place. I was going to say, because that's what the people who play ca- play Classic want. <laughs> oh so, my. So, the joke going around is they're, they're having Cataclysm Classic so they can have World of Warcraft Classic Classic. I, I mean, <laughs> seems likely. So yeah, like, uh, that's, that is entirely not my wheelhouse. Like, like, Krangled WoW maybe is my wheelhouse, but I don't know. I, I'm using a term crangled, and some of our listeners won't know what the hell it is, but we're going to talk about that. Because it's nonsensical. So, so this all stems from a Reddit me where someone was making a joke about how weird it is to set out of pa- Path of Exile for a year and then come back and have just nonsensical item listings. And they they did this thing where they showed like this item with all these random things on it, and the bottom thing, instead of corrupted, was crangled. And Grinding Gear Games ran with that, and they've started doing these events where they quote-unquote crangle the tree, where they take the passive tree, and they just jumble it beyond all reckoning. Just everything's moved around. Like... Node node types don't change. So, like, if something was a keystone previously, there's a keystone there. Might be a completely different keystone. It's almost certainly a completely different keystone. Yeah, like, you you may be pathing your way to something that was a 30 strength node, but now it's chaos infusion or something like yeah. that, or chaos inoculation. Mana battery or something, yeah. And, I, and, impor- and importantly, you can't see what any nodes are until you are next to them. Right. You have to choose, like, you have to submit, like, and it's not even that you can, like, pick a node, and then it unmasks the next node, and then, you know, choose to apply it after you've seen a couple nodes. No, you have to apply it before it shows you the next node. Yep, you have to commit. And I, like, there's it's an madness. event going on right now this weekend. Um, was the It's the Krangled event, and... It's a totally different Krangle tree than the the first time they did this. And, like, it'll be the same Krangle tree for everyone. So after a while, some information gets out. But, like, this year, some trolls wrecked the the third-party sites that are trying to keep track of, like, the information by submitting wholly bogus information. So you can't really trust anything. So I mostly tried to just YOLO my way through a ranger. And if you get like in, there's three events in a row. And if you get to level 50 in two of the three events, you just instantly get a loot box. Yeah. You get, I think two microtransactions, like two just random cosmetic things. Yeah. It's just one of the ancestor loot boxes, which, which like grinding your games has like probably the coolest loot boxes in that. Like they're random, but like it's a random draw of a, a number of items that are available during that specific league. But like, once you've gotten one of them, you you'll never get a duplicate. So like, you're just slowly checking them off. And, and in fact, then, they've, they've said, if you already own everything that would be in that box, then instead you'll get two of a different box. Right. Yeah. And it'll start drawing against other ones that you don't have. Um, so like, that's cool. And then also once a league has been out, they just move them to the, the MTX shop. So you can just, out and out buy whatever the hell you want. So for people that love loot boxes, it's there for everybody else. They should just wait and get the one they want. But yep, at least once a league, they usually do something where they give away free boxes. Um, so I, I wanted to get to 50 um, just so I could do that. And man, it is, it is a bit of a mess to get to 50 it's, on a crangled event. It's, it's a weird time. Because, I mean, the, the main thing is, like, classically in Path of Exile, you go in with an idea of, like, okay, I'm going to do this, so I need these. Like, even if you don't follow an existing build or something, you have a notion of, I want to use this type of ability and have these defenses, so I need to go for this part of the tree, and all that's out the window. Cause... Right, like, because normally you say, okay, well, I want to play a bow build, but I want it to be a little bit tanky. Okay, 
I'll play it on a champion because champion has good defenses, but womp womp, none of the ascendancy nodes are the same either. So like, who knows what a champion is in this, in this little event. Um, you know, I, I think I ended up going Raider, uh, on some bad information and like, that was a mistake, but whatever. I still got through Katava and life's good. I figured I could play anything to level 50. Like I, I specifically, and I think it's the, basically the same way you started up and started out, went for a toxic rain, uh, yep. ranger because like, that's, that's the first thing I ever played back when I knew absolutely nothing about this game. And I managed to get like two well, maps and I figure I actually understand how the game works now. I can probably right. make it to level 50. Well, and toxic rain and caustic arrow are two really good abilities because mm. they don't care about what, how good your bow is. Yeah. Um, and then like I started getting a bunch of elemental damage and lightning nodes. So I pivoted into lightning arrow. Um, and I was running basically like a dual lightning arrow setup for a while until I got artillery ballista. And then I'll, I switched over to lightning arrow artillery ballista. But like at first I was running caustic, caustic arrow, you know, and then I switched over to toxic rain when I could get toxic rain. Um, and I figured like the, the reason why I started as ranger is progression of abilities for that class is really clean. Mm. Like you're getting everything that you need from, from quests basically. Yeah, they get um, they get good useful quest rewards. Right. And like sure it's dash instead of flame dash or frost blink, but like I can make good with dash. It's fine. Yeah. And I'm mostly using withering step anyway, so So that stuff is not crangled, I guess. No, no, yeah. like your your abilities are not crangled, just your talent trees. So And okay. quest rewards aren't, yeah. For a long time, it basically feels like you just didn't choose any talent pool. Because, like, you're not getting, like, I, you don't realize how much just general useful survival crap you get off the tree in, like, the early tree. And, like, trying to play without any of that is an interesting proposal. And also, like, I, I was having to find dexterity gear as a dexterity class because you're not getting any of the travel notes. Like you're not getting any dex or strength or int on your tree. You're getting random ass like wand skills or, and they're not even logical blocks either. So like, here's a wand skill. Well, after that, it's a projectile damage skill. And after yeah. that is a trap skill. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've, th there've been a couple of points where I've been in a situation where I'm just like, there, there is nothing visible. Like none of the nodes that I can take next are remotely useful to me. So, which one gets me closer to like multiple nodes, and maybe one of them will be right. Like, I guess I'm gonna take this dagger node because I, I want to know what's on the other side of it. There's a keystone over there. Maybe it'll be a really good one. Um, I lucked into finding um, divine whatever which is the plus 50% elemental damage node. Ah. I think it's divine justice. Yeah. That's a real good one. Yeah. So like that immediately, like that was a, that was a noticeable power increase. Um, but it's, it reminds me of playing sealed magic, but with a really bad deck, <laughs> like you don't have anything like, what can I make work? And I got a bunch of crappy cards. I mean, having done this, it was interesting. Do I think I'll do it again? Probably not. But like, it gave me, you know, a day and a half of fun. So yeah, it was, it's it was entertaining. Cool. I'm looking forward to the flashback event, which is next week. Yeah, because they're giving us back Sentinel, right? Right, Sentinel and Calandra. Yeah, and I, I both, I, I like Sentinel, and I, you know, I when I, when I wasn't was accidentally cool. trolling my friends. <laughs> Like I, I thought Calandra was a cool mechanic. It's just the base the state of the state. game was was bad at that point. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed the league mechanic. I, but yeah, the the league overall was not great. Well, and I wasn't in Sentinel long enough to actually play with recombinators, so I'm interested in that. Yeah, like they seem really powerful. Yeah, because like really. <sighs> crucible trees were a lot like recombinators where you you know blend two trees hoping to get something good 
except for it's blending rare items, hoping to get something good. But I guess since I did Krangle, I don't have to worry about the last league mechanic, which is every 15 minute, what a map has for a special ability changes. I mean, it sounds pretty exciting. It does, but also like, I don't know, like it, it's, it could either be really good or really bad. I probably want something pretty tanky. I would be fine if they just let uh, the, the, the flashback league play out until, you know, the new league launches. Then it will be time for Bell League. Yes. Yeah, and I still feel a little bit egotistical by calling it Bell League, but... You didn't call it that. We all called it that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I've just rolled with it, because, like, that's what you're all referring to it as. That's its name. And, like, we we officially now have all the right tabs to do Bell League. Yay. We've got, like, an Essence tab, and we've got a Delve tab, and a Fragment tab. Godra has kind of cracked me up, and, like, it's it's it's... I won't go too far into it because he's not here to defend himself, but, <laughs> but like he's getting super planny on like, this is exactly what I'm going to do uh, to make the most impact quickest. And the, the, the degree to which he has flipped from repeatedly bounced off the game to just like 100% drunk. The Kool-Aid is yeah, yeah like, it's just very entertaining route optimization. And, and like, to be fair, the number of times he bounced off is about the number of times I bounced off. Oh yeah! Before it finally sunk in. I I, I think that's I think around three times is yep. you just yep. you've just got to fail three times before this game makes any sense at all. And then you then you start learning to take off take take smaller bites. Like you can't just drink from the fire hose and expect to to really grok everything. You kind of have to just like, okay, I'm going to focus on this one thing and I'm going to learn about that. But like, I only got to that point after having built a lot of really horrible characters. And I kind of feel like you have to mm -hmm. go through the building horrible characters phase. You have to make mistakes, mistakes so that you can learn from them. This would be easier if the game like was willing to help you learn from your mistakes, but what can you do? Yeah. I mean, like I, I would still really like it if you had a little bit more forgiveness. Cause like, Eventually you get to the point where you have more regrets than you can use. And like, I res I've respect my Ranger twice during this league, like almost top down respect. Like, so I went from my initial lightning arrow build to a crit based magic find. And then I spent a bajillion respects to go back to Raider and do frost blades just to see what I thought of that after building a totally different lightning arrow magic fine character. So like eventually you have plenty of regrets to just keep regrets being the respect currency. Yeah. Orb of regrets. But yeah. I mean, you, you eventually have plenty, especially if you do delve. Cause I always like, I think I've got 600 even after respecting a character twice. Um, I mean, my goal is to get down into delve early in the league so that I can just start generating bubblegum currency that people can use for general crafting because i still believe that fossils are the best way to craft most things it does seem like it yeah it is the most deterministic manner in, for most crafting but like also i just generate a lot of decent resist gear in delve like when i was always switching over to frost blades i needed like some resist rings and a resist belt and i went looking through my shop and I had decent items that I had chucked in my 20 chaos bin. Mm -hmm. and was able to like get my resist sorted just from shopping my own inventory. That's the only thing that's going to be weird about Bell League is like, I think we're actually going to have to use public shop tabs because there won't be enough room in the bank. Oh yeah, like, to just, I'm just going to be able to show each other what like, we have. Yeah. Like I'm just going to chunk stuff in there and like put like, you know, I think the, the smallest currency you can put on it is a wisdom scroll. And that way you can at least use the trade site to see what all we have sitting in our vault. Cause like that is kind of a cool aspect of doing the guild SF type thing is trade still works, but it's just limited to the handful of us that are playing in the league. I feel like this is your sneaky way of making me actually figure out how to use the trade site. <laughs> Maybe. No, it's not an ulterior motive. I just know I have way more bank space than the guild does. Yeah. Like, I I mean, we have like, I don't know, 40, 50, six links in the guild bank right now. 
They do, they do seem extra common, this uh, this league. I mean, like, I've gotten so many of them, and, like, I can't not pick them up. I mean, yeah. I've sold some of the mirrored ones just for, uh, you know, bindings, but, okay. So, this is a topic that I didn't know if I wanted to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it. I don't know if y'all have been following the mess that's been going on at Bungie this week. I mean, no. I know that there's been a mess, but not much beyond that. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Massive layoffs, apparently they, like, it's come out that they, like, missed the projections by 45%. Oh, my. They underperformed projections by 45%, which is like, okay, maybe you should get rid of the person who did the projections instead of, like, all this staff. But, like, yeah, they've, that makes you they've think the projections cut were off. into, basically, all the community staff is mostly gone. All of the the composers that worked on Bungie are gone. Ouch! Mm. Oh my god! Um, like like significant members of the Bungie staff that have been there since the beginning are gone, and like in a lot of cases, these were people that like had shares that were supposed to be vested after the Sony sale that haven't had time to vest. Ugh. Like they're losing their shares, and um, and reportedly like. Right before this this round of firings, there was a big rah rah speech of, you know how you know they're going to have to pull through this, and there's not going to be any firings, but it's going to be tight for a while, and all this stuff. And then, like the next day, all these people that are remote work were told that they had to be in in the office for a meeting the next day, and like some of them didn't even get until the meeting. Until they had gotten a slip saying they were fired. Ugh. So yeah, it was, it's like a bad situation. And supposedly they were in dire enough straits that if the final shape, which is the next expansion, didn't land well, it might have taken the entire company prior to the Sony deal. And like, it didn't impact anyone on the marathon team. But I don't know, like there's been a mass backlash from the 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 fledgling destiny Two community mm -hmm. and they've also announced that they're delaying the final shape by half a year so that means they're gonna have a season that like lasts half a year with no new content so like destiny's not in great shape and i don't know like i the thing with destiny is and this is this is why i think they're in really dire straits is i know way more people who used to play destiny than i know people who play destiny mm-hmm it's like the last time I seriously played Destiny was probably 2018, I think. Yeah. Whenever they put in Stasis, I played a little bit that season. But like prior to that, I think the last time that I seriously played was when we were on the moon. Yeah, that would be the last time for me. And yeah, and I, and I was playing a lot. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Like you, me, yeah. and Warren were playing a lot during that season. But like and they were, and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna get rid of half of the content in the game." Yes. Like, and uh, no, <laughs> all the PR that I've seen about the final shape is they're shooting to be at least as good as, as forsaken. And like, to me, that's kind of a bittersweet statement considering you removed everything from forsaken from the game. Mm -hmm. So like you're, you're saying that the best content you ever did is something that you just removed from the game. I mean, that was, that was kind of the final straw for me was that all this stuff that I enjoyed, nobody's ever going to be able to play because it's gone from the game. Yeah, Destiny w was always uh, like bouncing in and out sort of game for me, but I enjoyed it. But yeah, once that announcement of the mass cutting of content happened, it was like, w I will be so lost. <laughs> like, I when I come back to a game after being away for a while, I like doing some stuff that's familiar to ground myself until I figure out what's going on again. Right. And I don't know, like, like I remember when they did the first cut, the reason why they said they were doing the cut is it didn't live up to their standards and they were, you know, wanted to rework the content, but they wouldn't remove anything else. Like that was kind of the sentiments when they removed the Osiris stuff and, uh, uh, Titan and some of the early stuff that they removed in the first pass of removal. Mm -hmm. And then they did it all over again with forsaken. So like, okay. I kind of believed you the first time 
Because, you know, Osiris was kind of janky content and, you know, the, the Mars area, while I really liked the event on Mars, I get it. And the area they put on the moon was just a better version of the Mars event. So like, okay, you know, I can see how they might want to rework that (laughs) and eventually reintroduce it. But then like Forsaken really was some of the most interesting content they put in the game and it's just gone, permanently gone. And like. Also, when they killed off Cade, sorry, spoilers for an event, like, for, I don't know, 10 years ago? I don't, I don't <laughs> know how long ago it's been. But when they killed off Cade, they were like, no, we're really seriously doing this. And then apparently Cade's back in the final shape. Yep. So that feels cheap. I don't know. I The, the problem that I had with Destiny seasonal content was the grind and the fact that, like, you couldn't realistically sit out a season without feeling like you were overwhelmingly behind. And in spite yeah. of like all the content removals, that was the other thing that kind of killed me. Cause like there was so much of a light grind and it's not like all your stuff was brought up to the highest point of the previous season at the end of a season. So like, not only did you have to like join back in the rat race and grind with everyone, you had to do remedial grinding to be able to grind with everyone else. Like I would have really loved to have seen what destiny two would have been like in a more ARPG, uh, seasonal model where everyone starts on the same even playing field at the beginning of a brand new season. Mm-hmm. Cause like, that's the thing that I dig about, you know, Diablo three or even Diablo. Well, probably less for Diablo four. I don't know. Like the leveling process was fast enough that like I could see it's not that big of a deal now, but, you know, like an ARPG season, like Path of Exile, if for whatever reason, you know, say this next season doesn't go super well and I want to take a year off, I can take a year off because if I come back, I'm just at square one like everyone else. I didn't miss out on getting a weapon that was only available during a season that I didn't play and will never get again. I don't know. Hopefully they sort stuff out. I feel like they're in a down cycle like WoW was in a down cycle. Yeah, it's, it definitely seems like it. So unfortunately, this is kind of the show dominated by my topic since we're down a bunch of people. And I had to kick some things to the next week. <laughs> um, I mean, that's fine that's unless fine. people want to talk about Peglin for half an hour. <laughs> Peglin is really good. It is really good. Like, if, if you have a phone, get, get Peglin for your phone. It's really good. If you've got a Switch, get Peglin for your Switch or Windows. So the other thing that happened with me this week is I kind of eased back into Final Fantasy XIV. And I don't really know what it was that prompted it. I don't know if it's the stuff okay. coming out of FanFest or just we've reached the nearing the end of the cycle of content for Final Fantasy XIV of the 6.0 stuff. Yeah. So it's time to catch up. Um, yeah. Well, and there's two events going on right now because there's... Yep. There's Halloween and there's Fall Guys. And the Halloween event is always one of the more charming events. So um, the Fall Guys event's pretty fun. Like, I mean, it, it's Fall Guys. So you you either like that or you don't like that. Um, there's some truly gaudy items that you can get. Um, I got the, the pink rhino, and that's a thing. I will never use this mount, but I like it's a mount, so I might as well get it. It's quite amazing in its ugliness. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you can't see your character in it at all. It's just a giant pink foam rhino <laughs> with, with like, tank treads. Um, yep. The, the two minions are cute. Like, my goal is to get, like, I've got a minion and a mount now. My goal is to get the other minion, and then I will consider myself happy for the event. Like, most of the clothing options are very modern clothing styles like a hoodie or like that and i don't know like i have this thing where i don't really like modern clothing styles in a fantasy mmo Mm -hmm. so that's not really my jam but it will be a lot of people oh yeah i mean the shoes light up so i can see a lot of people going for those i I might grab the sneakers just to have them but like it's it's fall guys like it's it's fun the cues are fast um i suck at it but like it's fine. You know, I can, I can suffer through anything to get like an item. Um, and just failing gives you a decent amount of the currency. So 
You know, you could just keep throwing yourself at it over and over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you get MGP too. Right, like you, you get could, a shocking yeah. amount of MGP. Like it's it's a good li- little amount of MGP. And the explanation for why this is happening is these beans showed up at the gold saucer and um, Papa Hildebrand, uh, Godbert, befriended them because of course he did. And so he decided to build this thing to make them happy, which honestly makes perfect sense. That's entirely in keeping with the way Godbert's brain works. <laughs> yep, it is canon now. And and even after the event, like the special collab event ends, apparently the the game is not going away. Like it's sticking around. Oh, that's cool. Like, yep. Yeah. I can see this definitely being a, a favorite event in the Gold Saucer. I mean, that's kind of the beautiful thing about Final Fantasy XIV is you got this gold saucer and you can put anything in it and make it feel in game. Yeah. But where's Blitzball? I don't know. Like, I'm shocked that. Okay, One we're day. going to an <laughs> island. Maybe it's finally coming. Yeah, like it, it, Dawn Trail is 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 the perfect place to put Blitzball in. It is. Oh no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> ha 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 ha. That's, uh, I can see that being an emote or something. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying really hard not to go into grind out all the jobs mode like I did before Endwalker. Because, like, that's kind of my default mode. So I am I am concerned that I will burn myself out. Because, like, I'm already starting to level alt jobs. But you're starting from a pretty reasonable place. There's yeah, nothing like that. that's really lagging behind, right? I looked at your, <laughs> your spreadsheet. Well, I, I, <laughs> I took everything from 50-ish to 90, or from 50-ish to 80 last time, so I've done the hard grind. All I've got is 10 levels on each one, and I'm mostly just doing beast quests to do that. Yeah, just beast. I mean, typically what I do is just yeah beast, beast tribe quests and some hunts. I've never got into the hunt train thing, and I think I would love it, but like it requires using Discord communities to really get into it. But it so I, I do not do that. What I do is I set the party finder up to watch for parties for the hunt and ah. to ping me if one comes up. And you know, so because you can set it up to do the thing like if there are basically once every minute, if there are open parties of the type that you have it set to look for, it tells you. And so okay. I just do that. And because people start making parties in the party finder and I'll just, you know, hop into one of them. All right. Because yeah. this game actually uses the party finder, unlike Guild Wars 2. <laughs> At least on our server. Apparently it varies from server to server, but our server, C- Cactor says use the party finder. Okay. That, that's good. Like the other thing that like has helped me coming back is... There is a very prolific Final Fantasy fourteen community on the Fediverse, and they have cross world link shells. So I've I've gotten into several of those. So I should probably hook up with that. I see enough of their content in my feed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I I I I know all these people, and you know one of them helped me get almost all the way through the new deep dungeon. I need to do more of that. I I, I actually I need was the able- last ten. I did. I've done the first ten. Is all I've done, and I I did them solo. And I guess I got lucky my first run and got and got a clone that was actually really good for the final boss because I tried to do that again and died horribly almost immediately. Oh, so I I'm guessing just the increased difficulty of it is what's keeping people from queuing for it because like it was weird to me that I was in a queue for forty minutes. And then finally, someone from from Mastodon took pity on me and queued uh, <laughs> to help out. But yeah, I've only ever done it with my usual uh, group of four friends. But I have heard that a lot of people still prefer to do Palace of the Dead or Heaven on High for leveling, especially. Yeah, I wasn't expecting like as many things to be one shots as they are. Yep. <laughs> Like, this seems like a weird choice by the team. Nobody was running Palace of the Dead as challenge content unless you were soloing it. Yeah. It was just a way to level things easy. And, like, I, I supposedly Bosja is still the faster way to level alts, but, uh eh. It's running around going from fate to fate. That makes sense. Yeah. Hey, 
So like for me, I leveled. Uh, so the problem that I always run into with Final Fantasy 14 is I almost always level a tank the first time around, but then I don't want to tank for random people. So I, I struggle to get reattached to the game. Um, so I just did duty support to level my machinist and it yeah. gave me a comfy way to like ease back into doing the content. Um, and especially as a DPS, it's less of a, like, it's less of a difference between like running with duty or the, the, the duty support is less of a difference than running with players. If you're a DPS than it is, if you're trying to tank or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, like I, and now I'm, I'm starting to catch up on the story content and it's finally sunk its hooks into me. Yeah. It's, it's really good <laughs> and very final fantasy four inspired. It is, is very <laughs> final fantasy four, which was like a, it was a special game for me, like, mm -hmm. or final fantasy two, as I knew it. Right. I've kind of slowed down a bit cause I was, wor I was basically working on the MSQ every night. And then one of the books I was waiting on came off hold so like i stopped doing story content for a bit but i've heard really good things about like last expansions alliance raids and also this expansions alliance raids so i want to work through those at some point what, I, what i've done of this expansions have been really neat i really enjoyed the the story from these ones too also bell have you checked out your your tropical island I have not unlocked my <laughs> tropical island. I don't even know where that unlocks. It's pretty inter it's it's fun. Um Tataru is involved. It's I don't probably remember. Probably Charlene. Okay. I've I got, kinda think it is. I've not gotten rid of the blue exclamation points in Charlene. Yeah. I was working through um Thavnir. Yeah, try going on over and talking to Tataru or one of her minions and it sh should be that. Yeah, I've got some side story that they're wanting me to do for uh, Kryle, and I don't know what that's about, but you know, I, I will do that at some point. I mean, the Kryle one should be the uh, the twenty four man. Yeah, oh, okay. I think so. Okay, cool. I, I'm basically learning how to you know make hippos go fast right now. <laughs> yes. I I I want a baby hippo. The two little baby hippos I found were adorable. The hippos are wonderful. I think all the beast tribes have been really fun this expansion too, but the I, the hippos love, are very cute. I love the beast tribe quests in general. And yeah, I know they changed them from beast tribes, but I will forever call them beast tribes. Oh yeah, the tribe quest. Yes. Um, like my all my crafts are super far behind, so like I've not even finished the the Ixal one. Um, but I I did do all of the gathering, so. At some point, I will do the gathering one for this expansion. That kind of peaked with the catfish people for me. And <laughs> yes. It's true. I don't know. Like, I, I'm happy to kind of be back in the swing of that. At some point, I need to get back into Guild Wars 2 as well, because I've not done any of the Soto content. Yeah, I need to do that too. I at least want to figure out how the hell I do the riffs. Because, <laughs> like, that sounds like fun content. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mini games. I've also played a little bit of New World, so and I, I think I've done most of the expansion content. So like it was fun. Um, the flail weapon is cool. So many games, not enough time. Yep. And this week, the next Travis Baldry book comes out. It does. Yay! And one day in a few months, I'll get it from the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, so, so, shockingly enough, lots of people have put this book on hold. It's maybe kind of popular. That is heartwarming. Libraries are awesome. But also, I can't wait for the library. <laughs> Mine's coming to my Kindle right away. <laughs> yeah, there, there are 90 people waiting on 18 copies. I mean, on the plus side, you know... It's probably a pretty quick read. It is. Like a lot yeah, of those I'm, people will get through it in a day or two. I I'm just gonna pick it up. I'm not gonna wait for this one. Like this is this is an important enough thing to me. Like the Legends and Lattes is probably my book of the year. Like I mean, I don't think it came out this year, but you know, it, it I read it this year. We've never done one of those, but we should do a books of the year show. I am a hundred percent here for that. Yeah, I'm into it. I've actually read a bunch of books this year. I 
Yeah, like I, I'm on book 43 of the year. Yeah, I'm up to 76. <laughs> Damn. A lot of those are rereads. Yeah. But buying a Kindle, like finally breaking down and buying a Kindle, like uh, unblocked something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm reading I, lots of books again. I like, I love bookstores. I love going to used bookstores. I just don't know that I will ever get back in the habit of reading physical books again. It is just too convenient. Yep. And I just, at some point, ran out of space to put all the books that I had, and I couldn't mm-hmm. bear to part with them. But I... I, yeah. I need a bag of holding for, mm-hmm. for all the random physical stuff. Like, I, if I can ever get one of those, life will be good. You know, I just put all the things that I don't want to get rid of but I also have no need for right now. Yep. Well, the other dangerous thing about the Kindle that I love and is also bad is that if it is 1130 at night and I finish a book and I want to read the next book in the series, I, I don't have to get out of bed. It's already <laughs> right there in your hand. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, that that's how I ended up staying up till like, 4 a.m. reading bookshops and bone dust was I finished the book that I was doing, was reading. It was like, oh yeah, I've been meaning to read this. I'll check it out. And read the first chapter and just kept reading. Yep. Oh crap, it's 1.30. I should go to sleep now. Like, that book had perfectly sized chapters. Mm-hmm. Like, but the, and the, the problem is, is they were so tightly packed that like, just one more. Yep. Just one more. It's like fine. Pringles. Just one more. Yeah. As opposed to not so most most recently, I just earlier today finished uh, the first of the Wax and Wayne books from Brandon Sanderson, which is a lot of fun. Um, if anybody who's read the original Mistborn trilogy, it's the same world three hundred years later, but more of like a buddy book, a little bit of buddy comedy to it. Um, and basically, the world has advanced to kind of like Edwardian slash Wild West era. But, you know, and that that one did have chapters. Before that, I would read uh, one of Ian Banks' culture novels, and that man didn't really do chapters as such. I think the book had four chapters. It was not a short book. And the series I'm working through right now, I've already sold Thalen and Grace on, but... Um... First book is called Three Parts Dead by Max Gladstone. It's part of a series called The Craft Sequence, where it is a <sighs> magic in in an urban setting kind of thing, but it's not like you know a Dresden or something like that, where like there's non magical people and magical people. It's just like magic is accepted part of reality, and like mm-hmm. romancers are lawyers, and the gods exist, and you know, their power is tied up by legal contracts and things like that. So I do have to say ne- necromancers are lawyers. Sounds very Terry Pratchett. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's wild. Cause like, you know, if a God dies, the necromancers can bring him back, but like it's at a cost. So like the God may continue to function and may still be able to fulfill, uh, his obligations, you know, has his legal contracts that have obligations on him, but like <laughs> won't have a personality anymore. Yikes. Cause like that got sacrificed, <laughs> but so like, it's, it's interesting. Like necromancy is a thing. Um, the ma- magic is generally referred to as the craft. Um, but it's, it's got like this weird, <sighs> an event happened like 50 years before the series of the novels called the God Wars, where basically like all of the the strongest practitioners of magic fought the gods and the gods lost. And, you know, there's all these ramifications of, you know, what happens if, you know, you were a society where blood sacrifice was a normal part of your, your life. And then 50 years ago, it was outlawed. There's going to be some people that like prefer the old ways. Like, Mm -hmm. so it's, it's an interesting series. Like, um, I'm on the third novel and the first two didn't have any crossover, 
but the third one is starting to get some crossover. So I, like, I feel like we're heading somewhere, but like, I don't even remember why I know this series exists. Sometimes I see a thing pop past my feed and it lodges in my brain. And this one seems to have, but I can't pin down who told me about it, but so far it's really good. And it's by an author that I had never heard of. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I guess just general recommendation. Cause I think a lot of us have read it. Uh, starter villain is amazing. Starter villain is a lot of fun. I still haven't gotten to that one. It's on my list. I mean, it's... it was real fast. Like it was a short, like it was a two night read. Oh yeah. Thing. It's yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it is very much a Scalzi book in, in the vein of some of his, I mean, in the vein of Kaiju preservation society right, like, and also like his older stuff, like, um, Asian to the stars, uh, like set in basically the real world, but there's some weird aspect. Right. Well, I mean, it's exactly what Kaiju preservation society did for the monster movie organization genre. Um, but this time it's Bond villain. Yeah. And there's cats. Who doesn't love cats? Of course there's cats. You can't be a proper Bond villain without a cat. Exactly. That checks out. That's probably a show. Any final thoughts about anything? Books are good. Go get a library card. Yes. Get multiple. If you can. If you, you can. can have, have multiple registered through Libby. Like, yeah. And, and they all have different things that they're checking out. Like, so... I need to check some of my like outlying libraries and see whether they charge for a card because I've discovered apparently the our central library does charge people outside of its area for a but card, like, and my coworker us, is rather cranky about it. For us, it was like fifty dollars a year, and like that's well worth it to support a library system. Yeah, yeah, that 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 I think I could swing for access yeah, to I'm additional. Not going to be grumpy about that because I have there are. There are a number of books that I I would like to read that my library doesn't have. Yeah, that's in some cases what sent me down that path was that like the one that I got the first library card from didn't have a lot of things, and then I got another one, and then while we're at it, might as well get a third one. <laughs> yeah, and in some cases, it's like later books in series that's okay. I've read the first two books in the series, and now you don't have the fourth one. Well, okay, Bye. so when I was reading Old Man's War. Like one of the libraries only had from Zoe's tale forward. Huh. So didn't have any of the first three books. Weird. And I mean, you could, you could read Zoe's tale without having read the previous ones, but you'd miss, right, but it's you'd miss out on a lot of much. stuff. I love Zoe's tale, but it's basically just a retelling of book three. So yeah. anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See ya. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. <laughs>